I think we're going to stick around here. Hmm. And pick Rogue. All my cool heroes. Paladin. You want Paladin? Yeah. Okay. I like playing it. Especially with the picture. Broken. Yeah, we, we, weren't, we were never going to get a Warlock hero power if you're going to co-op with me here. <laughs> <laughs> It's my last day, man, and I still can't get Warlock Hero Powers. It's just rude. I've had three Warlock Hero Powers in, like, 25, 30 runs. I thought, like, during my bad streak, I thought, okay, the streak is gonna break, and then I'm going to just... My win rate's gonna skyrocket, because I'm gonna get a bunch of Warlock Hero Powers in a row right at the end of Dual Class, and it just never happened. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunate. It's pretty, yeah, Paladin Demon Hunter is probably the best, but um, the Priest combo is really good too. You just have a worse hero power. And Shaman. You get a 12 with Paladin Shaman. Yeah, the same holds for that. Mm. So why don't you switch with me and pilot? Oh, oh, oh. You have streamer now. Oh. Well, who's in control now, chat? End stream. <laughs> right click geek bry ban. <laughs> <laughs> I guess right. you could do that anyway, right? Because you're yeah. a mod. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I can do it anyway. I think I want to go Paladin Shaman. Great. So we're going to do it. Click here. Oak. <laughs> Paladin plus Professor Oak. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> Never doubt negative one. Okay. <laughs> Overridden. <laughs> All right, so you want to work on middle game stuff. So like you know, you feel like you know early curve. The funny thing is, like middle game consistency often has to do with how you play the early game. So we can keep that in mind. So tell me what you would pick. For each of these. Probably not the chum. Yeah. Um, chum suck it. Dark Conviction is a good card, like, for, for big stuff. And it's also a shadow spell for that one minion. Um, it's interesting that it's a shadow spell. Dark Conviction? Well, I meant in, like, Paladin. I, you wouldn't think there would be too many shadow spells in Paladin. I call conviction. Anyways, uh, I don't. I mean, one man, one floor is cool, but like, I'd probably go dark conviction. <laughs> yeah, I never really figured out how to draft in this meta. <laughs> to be honest with you. <laughs> Um, not, uh, we're, we're not leaning towards the ash tongue. We're gonna take dark conviction. So what are what we should talk? I think during this draft we should talk about archetype. Two or so three. So going going bananas. into it, you're looking for banana mans, okay? Well, you're you're doing the mating call. Um, I mean, do you have an archetype in mind? You you wanted to go with these classes. Are you going to try to be low curve? Are you going to try to have really powerful chunkers? I, f I feel like... 
Paladin Shaman is more low to mid curve with just a lot of really powerful swing cards. Yeah, Shaman has those good board affecting spells. Mm -hmm. And with Totem, you can really stretch your value if you go low curve. Um, it'll take you a little bit longer to run out of stuff. I like that because I don't like running out of stuff in this game. Yeah. Grab some Dark Conviction. Is this ever better than a ping? Bronze Herald. Um, it could be. It's in general a worse card than the Rocket Og Merchant. You know, and we have two options here, of course. Uh. But, um, the interesting thing about Bronze Herald is that it does keep you from running out of stuff for a while, yeah. right? It refills your hand. It's a way less flexible card than the Og Merchant, though. Pally, so we're Pal Paladin Shaman. What do you mean, Demon Hunter? <laughs> um let's get a ping Throw yeah a ping. Like it's just so much ping. better that like this early in the draft i don't think you need to panic about running out of stuff uh scorpid mm -hmm. excellent middle game card scorpid hmm. tough one here I feel like, oh man, this is a tough one. Brawler's a good two, but Fire Bloom Phoenix, I feel like you're always looking for reach in this meta. And you're not looking at Lost in the Jungle? I am. I, I had a Paladin deck a while ago that had Lost in the Jungle, and it was really good for me. I could see us taking all three of these. They're all good. For whatever reason, I've been taking Bone Chewer Brawler a lot less. Maybe just luck. It happens to be against good stuff. Which has the best win rate? You know, you can do this too. <laughs> <laughs> In Paladin. They are basically all the same. Lost in the Jungle has it by 0.4%, but they're basically in lockstep. I farmed it out to you. Yeah, I noticed. <laughs> Ivanovic seems to like Lost. I'm down. It's kind of a disappointing ending, but <laughs> that first season was... Um, Yeah, I would pick either the 1 or the 4 here. I, they're all good picks. Um, and you're right, Phoenix is a little bit of burn. Uh, we already have Scorpit that does something similar, and Lost in the Jungle is a great way to take the board early. Yeah, let's grab it. This is good. Yeah, it's actually pretty good. But I think I would take them out. I agree. Noble Mount, pretty good follow-up to Lost in the Jungle. Oh boy. Um, this card has done some damage to me. 
but I, I, I really like that speaker. Do we have a... I guess it's a little too early to see if we have a good Death Speaker deck. Yeah, I have more and more been feeling like just about every deck is a good Death Speaker deck. It's just some are better than others. Um, you know, like you wouldn't say, do we have a good Guardian Og Merchant deck? And they're kind of similar cards. Thanks, Geek Bray. See you later. Have fun at your meeting. So you like Death Speaker over the Outfitter? Yeah, I do. Outfitter can be good, but, you know, you top deck it, you have two cards in hand, one of them's a spell, mm. two mana, one, one, plus, you know, it's just yeah. kind of blech. The speaker can have huge swings. Um, it's the card amongst those that actively does something, also. Let me just talk about that. Og Merchant here. Yeah, I like Avenge, but Og Merchant is... It's so hard to pass. It's all-purpose. It's a ping. It's its a little body. It's a, a free hit. Basically, a Death Speaker. Uh, is this the Shard? Uh, some people like Bomber. I take a Shard here every time. I value Freeze Effects very highly. Mm. Uh, it, that's the sort of... Like, Freeze Effects and Stealth are the sort of thing that if you fall behind early... That's what lets you get back into the middle game. Uh, this seems to be a grim necro. Yeah, and why do you like the necro over the megasaur? I don't have any murlocs. Plus it's 4 mana, 4, 6 of stats versus 5, 4. And the megasaur's a beast. <laughs> All very good reasons. <laughs> yeah, succinctly said. I like having the multiple bodies of Grin and Necro because they make trades easier, which is something that I didn't used to value a lot. Um, Interesting. We got the hero power for it. Plus, it's already good stats. Better stat line than the Megasaur. It's not a beast, and there's upside. So these last two picks together are pretty instructive. Like, you don't even really think about the Megasaur, but the Totem Carver I, I would take here. Uh, isn't that what you played against me? Is that the card, or was it a different one mana one one? I can't remember. <laughs> it might have been that no, it was a different one. It was something to do with like made a weapon better or something. I don't know. Well, see how that worked out for me. <laughs> uh. Is it or is it, we're a third of the way in? Mm -hmm. Do we think it's this is a fine enough card to take, so that even if we don't get any leave rooms, it's fine. Well, to me, this pick is easy in a vacuum. Um, you don't take a one mana one one, and you don't take Mastodon because it's a huge beast, um, and it's not even that good anyway. Mm. But it would be a good time to look at the deck so far. So we've got pretty strong fours, which is good. We're lacking threes and twos. Kind of a problem. Yes. But our ones are looking solid. Very solid. So we've got a nice foundation here. We're looking for twos, we're looking for threes, and we're looking for anything reactive and anything that's like a win condition. Mm -hmm. True Seeker is none of these, but we don't have a five yet either, so it's fine. It's like the bare minimum of fine. And we might pick up Libram of whatever. Uh, Noble Mount and Guardian Og for Divine Shield action. Firefly is good, but I have ones. Do we just take the uh, the old big guy for the end game? Yeah, we do because if we had tap, I might consider Firefly a little bit. I think Firefly is really strong. Um, helps set up for Scorpids. Helps trade with like the Necromancer one ones. 
but again, we're thinking about sustaining ourselves. Colossus can end a game for you when you have no other cards in hand, so let's grab it. Uh, I would go Nobleman here. Yeah, it's kind of great for us. We need something to play on three. It's not particularly good to play on three, but it helps sustain our value. Mm. So I think it's nice. Just another Death Speaker. I would take another Death Speaker, and with two Death Speakers, maybe you even tempo it on three. It's a three mana two for Ugh. That's a great two, but also that's a win con. <laughs> it's a great two. It might be the best two. Some people think so. Mm. I think we take the Vile Fiend. Not Stormwatcher? No. 4 8 Wind Fury for one less man. <laughs> Um, I think I would take the Walking Fountain here, but Violafine is so good that if you want it, we should grab it. I want the Walking Fountain, too. I... Yeah, and I honestly don't know if it's more correct to take Violafine, but, um... Honestly, Walking Fountain has not you. been, like, the best for me recently. It's still amazing. Are we a deck that's going to need lifesteal? Hopefully not, but maybe. Let's take the Vile Fiend. Yeah, take the Vile Fiend. Chemist can be good, but I think we take the Bolt here. I like them both. I'm going to take the Bolt. The nature spell. Ooh. Yes, that's what we need. Yeah, yeah, we sure do need some value generation. A. Wow, I've never seen this person before. Yeah, it's fun. I haven't gotten to pick it for a while because usually it's against better stuff. And I think here it's against better stuff. But it's a definitely a fun card. We have some synergies for four dragon. Uh, yeah, we got Guardian Og Merchant. You know, you could like trade with four dragon and then just Guardian Og Merchant <laughs> again. Or Noble Mount it. Yeah, and Noble Mount's pretty good too. I like it. Um, I like it as well. Geddon is a pretty great comeback card, but hopefully we'll be on the board going into turn six. Throw this down, get a big buff in our hand. Oh, shit. Well, <laughs> there's a really funny Divine Shield build with Boulevard, <laughs> but it's absolutely not the correct pick here. <laughs> Flight Master Dungar. Get that adventurer. Hey, wait a minute. Where's Geek Bry? <laughs> He's in a meeting. Um... I like the shopkeep here. Another solid three that can be traded away in a pinch. I don't like the wanderer. Shovel fist. I'm not sure how to evaluate all the time. Because sometimes it's exactly what you need to win games, and sometimes it's just. It's just like. It's too burly, you know? Uh, I'm down to take Shopkeep, especially because we have needs and we have Colossus at the high end. I don't know if we need a Shovel Fist. Oh, man. That is tasty. Dormant one turn, do nothing, baby. <laughs> yeah, I mean, take, take, the, take the Vine Cleaver. Take the Vine Cleaver. Vine Cleaver is absolutely one of the best win conditions in Paladin. Anal Slogger. 
Oh man, lightning storm though. Yeah, so which is better? You're gonna have to go to shaman for these. Yeah. Nine, Pretty similar. Fog is a little higher. Hmm. Where'd you? Damn. I, I, I don't think we could pass up on Slogger, can we? Uh, how... Yeah, it's gonna be. A, it's gonna have to be on him because I, I already, I already removed Sorry. the noise gate. <laughs> I'll lean in and projectile. Yeah, all your words are like back up in here. Who are all your words? I can't like, help it. Gotta get them out here. <laughs> Thanks, Iso. Um, now help us with this pick. Okay, yeah, so I guess the question for this is how much do you believe that we are going to take and keep the board? Ivanovic is saying what I just said in a different way. So when you already have board control, Slogger is just kind of like a hammer. Yeah, you've got the board, the opponent plays something to contest, you slogger it to death, and either you still have the slogger and they can't kill it easily, or, you know, it just gets you through something and you keep throwing stuff face. I think we do have pretty good early curve. I mean, we picked the Vile Fiend, so I think then slogger makes sense. If we had gone Walking Fountain over Vile Fiend, maybe Lightning Storm would make more sense. Yeah, to help kind of get us to the end game. Kind of interesting. Behind. I hate passing Lightning Storm because AoE is like one of the most valuable things, but um, I think we've logiced it out to where it makes sense. Bassy. Yeah, yeah. Nothing else to contest here. Is this a... <laughs> this is kind of funny. Minion or to no minion? No minion? You're looking at the Kodo? beast. But I feel like it'd be pretty good in our deck. It would be good in our deck. It does a similar thing to Proud Defender, though. So, given that Nesting Rock is a beast... Maybe we should just take Proud Defender anyway. That's true. This doesn't look like a beast. We do have some great Kodo targets, it's true, but I, I don't know. That's a little... That's a little fancy-pancy. Well, let's see. What do we want to Kodo? Og Merchant's fine. Og Merchant's fine. Importer's good to Kodo. But you can really, ne you really can't guarantee that they're gonna kill any of these things. Basilisk Scorpid. Sneeze is excellent, and obviously Colossus is good. But you have to set that up a turn in advance, and then or or a turn after, and yeah, that's hard to do. Yeah. Yeah, I I don't think I care about Kodo. Yeah, take the thing. This one. Yeah. Team Porters, I love it. Oh man, punished. I mean, this is just a pick again. If you click solo the Murloc and Toxfin really fast, you'll have a poison <laughs> combo. <laughs> totally worth it. Yeah. Uh, we could take an Avenge this time, or. Jungle Panther. Yeah, not again, unfortunately, not looking at the rock. 
the beauty of Panther is that it's stealth, so no Galaka action. Um, so what is the question we have to answer when making this decision? Are threes good enough? Pretty much. I think they're they're right on the edge. Yeah, they're right on the edge. Three picks left. Hmm. I also think that we're going to have the board often enough to where Avenge can be really good every time we play it. Lost in the Jungle. We're going to often be playing Importer on two, which is sometimes not going to be enough to get us the board. Yeah, I am honestly a little worried about our early curve. I'm not sure if it'll work. But I think Avenge is enough better than Panther that we could probably still pick it here. And, and it can help with that early game, like Avenge and Tune. Hey, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, great. That that that's that's so nice. Perfect. Okay. Uh this kind of like solidifies our end game, yeah. Yeah, we sure could use one more Chungus. I like it. Big last pick. <laughs> okay, I mean, I guess just the run. I honestly wonder if Tiny Fin ever makes sense. I don't know. Why would it make sense? We have a lot of stuff that's like... No, yeah, just take the run. <laughs> okay. I like this a lot. Yeah, the three Pandarans makes it so that gonna we're going to usually gonna have, have something stuff. at least to play on to, and also we're less worried about running out of stuff. This is good, too, because we got the Basilisk, Mount, uh, Guardian, Og Merchant. This is, yep. Yeah. Oh, man. Fives. The cool thing about the sluggers is you play one on four, it's totally fine to overload because we don't really have fives. <laughs> we just true. play another four next turn. That's true. All right, let's rock and roll. So I think the flow of this deck is pretty good. You know, we were sort of looking at how each card is going to progress in our curve. Not just like what are good curve cards, but how they're going to progress into each other. Dawson likes our deck. Should we do a prediction? I don't care. Do you want to? Sure. Hey, negative one, are you are you there? Do you want to do a prediction? CJ doesn't know how. Yeah, I'm busy. <laughs> um, let's see. You could consider keeping a proud defender just to be like, maybe I coin it on four if I don't have anything else. But you know, we don't need to. That's right. Let's just look for our early game. Uh oh, Shaman Paladin versus Paladin Shaman. Our card our card quality is great, so we're probably gonna battle. Yeah, here. That's a good hand. Um Lost in the jungle. Yeah, it's unfortunate they kind of countered our first play, but it's still worth doing. Reporting for duty. Um, I can do a prediction if you want. Okay. Alright, y'all got two minutes. To get your channel points in, do you believe? Okay. Do you believe in seven wins? Dark conviction. I have things you never knew you wanted. Oh. Bach. I like Blessing of Kings. You can coin it out next turn. It's pretty dang good. And if it doesn't make sense, if they clear, then you coin out Grim Necromancer into Blessing of Kings. So we get rid of the recruit here, yeah? Well, what's more dangerous, a recruit or something that can be healed? Uh, either way, really. 
Libram Synergy. Yeah, I know we have Synergy for it, but that doesn't seem good enough to take the worst card. It's kind of nice to have Libram in the early game because you can keep playing it, but I'm generally not that uh, that bothered when opponents do that because they're using so much mana per turn to just get plus one, plus one. Well. Yep. What's up, Salty? Hi, Salty. Yeah, Necro is also good because it sets up well for buffs. Good morning, World Cry. Good morning to you. Hello, I'm back. Well, this is pretty nice. Oh. It's pretty fortunate that they froze their 3 1. Yeah. So we get the easy trade here with Bless New Kings, yeah? Yeah. Oh, someone's loading up for no, huh? Wow. Dang, who is it? How can I see? Oh, it's Salty Sea Dog. Right here. Oh, I see. Okay, so... They've given us a bit of a tough board to, to figure out here. I think I know my line. So the question is, how, how can we possibly protect this valuable minion we've got here? How do we get some juice out of it? Um, totem mount lightning bolt. Yep. So put the mount on. Trade with the three four, totem. And I would say lightning bolt three one. So we can just slog our next turn so put a seven on top of you. And we got a good totem too. So now, even if they hit the three damage in the right place, they can't clear the minion. So when you commit the Blessing of Kings, you're kind of in the position of wanting to protect that asset as much as you can. Damn. I don't want to adult today, I just want a day off. <laughs> Does your job let you take days off when you... Like, do you have a decent amount of off days? They had... Is that... Oh, Tidal Surge. Uh, what? Yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't even know that was a beast. Yeah, I wasn't even thinking about that. Okay, well. This is a good slogger, yeah. It gets healed. It's kind of our only... I mean, we can Biofiend to uh, Totem, but... Hmm. Um... Slogger's fine. You could do Vilefiend, Dark Conviction, trade the 1-2. That's fine as well. They're both fine. I don't like either of them very much. I think I want to do... Uh, okay, so I want to do the Vile Fiend play. Let me think. And then we could decide whether to Dark Conviction or not. I, I don't think we have to. We could just Totem. Totem's yeah, probably better. Right into this. Yeah, so why, so why did we go for Vile Fiend there and not Slogger? Um... You can end turn. But we're not overloaded. Right. right. Gotta play Vile, Vile Cleaver next turn. Oh, definitely getting rid of that shit. You don't want them to have stuff. Yeah. Duty. 
tabs and license plates, registration. Ugh, yeah. That's not the sort of uh, stuff I like to do either. Is it ever? Well, let me think. Is that better than Vine Cleaver? Because we could just play Vine Cleaver again next turn. Mm hmm. But you could also play Death Speaker Slogger next turn. So the question becomes in the face of two powerful plays, which has more impact now and which might have more impact later? I think what has more impact now is Vine Cleaver because it's just so perfect into this four health mm -hmm. and then potentially another four health the next turn. Yeah, that would, yeah. And like, it's it's nice to have the, and then you kill the dude. It's nice to have the free hit, but then they just kill the slogger with what's left on board, right? They got pretty card backs though. Yeah. Now that. Is a target for your plan. Well, or, or sneeze. Either way. We'll see what makes sense in a second. One, two, three, four, five. Yep, that's good. Trade, trade, trade. But we're in the same position as we were before. Two very powerful plays. What? They're both kind of equally good now, so what might be more useful later? Um, I don't know that it matters with how much stuff they have and also the fact that we still have dark conviction it probably doesn't matter but it's still worth thinking through i would do the slogger play now because a 6-6 six -six is a perfect thing to kill you can vine cleaver the 3-4 and then full clear um and that means that your slogger is completely protected the reason i like yeah i see you can go ahead and slogger into the 6-6 six -six with death speaker um and kill the 3-4. One ones go into the 2-1 and the 1-1, one one, and then the 3-5 can clean up. So, um, when you're asking this question of what will be better later, you, you generally want to hold on to the thing that does an equal amount of impact, but is more flexible and potentially more powerful. Sneeds is like one of the most flexible clear cards that exists. Because you can clear five two twos, you can clear one ten ten, you can clear all sorts of things. With the slogger play, it's not going to really get much better than killing something with exactly six health, the way that that turn was, you know? Does that make sense? Yeah. So it's a pretty, like, difficult thing to negotiate, but I, I find myself negotiating it a lot more than I used to of like, what's the resource that I think I can squeeze more juice out of or that will keep me safer going forward? Got a nice little backing track today. What? <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Okay. The, uh, a sound based backing track. Do you keep Avenge? Probably not. Probably going first, you just want to try to hit ones and two drops, you know? Threes, fine to keep. Especially because we don't have a lot of applicable threes. So generally. Oh, wow. What? <laughs> the, the, well, these are generally the three three drops that I would say we keep in the mulligan because. Oh, <laughs> uh, just trade this, or do we keep it for potential? Hard to say. We can trade it, I guess, because we would really like to find a two drop. There we go. Nice. Rogue Demon Hunter. I have things you never knew you wanted. Let's 
City tax. Backing track. Oh, God. Uh, yes, city tax. City tax. City tax can be... rough. It came back. Nice. And it's the best play here, yeah. Uh, I like the shopkeep best. It's not like a hugely important resource. I think it's a value trade here. If it pulls the hero power, that's fine. Dark Conviction is one of those things that we want to kind of cling to. Because maybe it makes a weak minion of ours a 3-3. More likely, it makes a huge minion of theirs a 3-3, so... We'd rather have that happen. Hmm. Yeah, coin hero power is an interesting one there. I don't think I agree with that. Trade Nobleman Avenge. Hmm. Nobleman over Basilisk. Either or, I feel. Nobleman just doesn't do much on the board. I think I'd rather get the Basilisk down. It's not that strong against Demon Hunter hero power, but it at least means they can't just plunk a 4-drop down, which I think might be what they're planning to do given that they coined last turn. Do they throw this too? Yeah, I don't mind it. A lot of people don't like playing Avenge prematurely like this, but I'm pretty sure they're going to kill our Basilisk before they kill whatever else we play, so... Okay, all right. Ooh, that's pretty nice. Uh, Nobleman Glacial Shard. Well, we should consider whether we want to trade the city tax or not. And I'm not sure. Do we think that they're going to go... Like, they've already played so many one health minions. <laughs> and by yeah. so many, I mean two. I, I doubt they have a ton more. And we're going to try to take the board, so I don't know if city tax is really great for us here. Interesting. All right, then, so with the nobleman, is the question, is shard good to copy, or do we want to copy something else? Our hand's not great, so maybe play nobleman yeah. first. My way, and then we can freeze... Well, what do you think, face or the minion? Face. Let's freeze face. The minion might trade into the 2-3 and buff the basilisk, which is either a good thing or a bad thing. It might be good because it gets it out of ping range. Yeah. Normally, you don't want to buff a poison, but... Oh, fuck. I sense your wow. Interesting. <laughs> oh, way. Actually, uh... Yeah, I was looking at that. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I wonder. And now we just totem. Hope for taunt. Uh, or we like all door that. lightning bolt the three one. That's the other option. We could also totem see what it is and maybe dark conviction it. Hmm. Mm. I think we should clear now. Because this will be a 6 2. Um. Yeah, go for your play. I'm really not sure what's best here.
This is good if they can't clear the 6-2, but I'm sure that they can. Strike. Strike or not? <laughs> um... <laughs> I love... Mm. Ooh. Hmm. I mean, you could trade an Aldor, that's one line. I mean, we probably want to trade that, right? So trade Aldor makes sense, and then it'll become a 5-6. A it's pretty good. A weird play. Interesting. Didn't play any of them. Yeah, did they get the outcast? They did. Uh. <laughs> what? <laughs> uh. Totem and the runt to start, I think. It's like it's not like we need Death Speaker for anything. We just want the stats. I guess we may as well dark conviction our totem and and go face. So we have two dark convictions is and we need to put Oh right, we just got it this turn. I thought we had it from before, I forgot. But it's still fine. That's still... Yeah. This better be a big play here. Okay, that's what Slam! Kablam! And, uh... Well, Dark Conviction and Artona might have saved our 4-1. Yeah. Huh. Are we just going all in here? Yeah, I mean, we, we are all in. We've been all in for a couple turns now. Good, that's good. Okay, what do you like? I think I, I, think I know my play. Conviction this. Immune this. Kill. Yeah, but you kill the 4-3 instead. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do we play this? Yeah. Mm hmm. Reporting for duty. The healing makes this so much nicer. Otherwise, you could continue, le you could consider leaving the 9 8 as it is and maybe thinking you're gonna conviction your totem for lethal in a future turn, but. Damn. That's a good turn. Shit. Whoa. And a secret. It's gonna come down to the wire. Well, not the worst. I don't know what to aug here. Protect your 4 2. I wonder. And trade into the 4 5, see if it's bamboozle or something. Well, maybe actually trade the 1 1 first. The battle. Okay. Dirty tricks. Yeah, it's dirty tricks. Not the one I was expecting. Let's eat. Mm hmm. Oh man, we need a. Good draw. Look at how bad we drew. Shit, that's pretty horrible. They got four dragon? Need one of our sloggers or something. Vine Cleaver could do it. Vine Cleaver could do it. 
That creep is so damn. good. Yeah, you smack the 6-7. We have plenty of health to use. Just sit. Yeah. That's a good buff. Certainly incentivizes the 5-1 to trade. Whiff. Whiff. Yeah, that's not good for us. He's whiffing. Sorry. <laughs> that's a whiff. Wait, that wasn't the card to discover. Uh, I don't know if that helped them that much. The buff. Oh my god. Terrible draw. Terrible draw. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Basically, every draw was better than that. So this is a case where we would have rather had Walking Fountain. <laughs> yeah. Game's over. We, yeah, yeah we're still okay, we're though. Shifting. We're swifting. Vine Cleaver might have done it by itself. What is this? Parlay, it's the four dragon. Don't have a pot. Nice. Nothing. Again, nothing. Nothing. Very good. Ooh. Yeah, when we picked up Vine Cleaver, I said that's a that's something that can carry all by itself. I won some totally lost games because of Vine Cleaver. Nice. Yeah, Frost worth kernels. All right. Yeah, we drew atrociously and still got there, which is a pretty good sign for um, our ability to not run out of stuff. No, no. I'm fine with that. Tend arm, please. 10% chance. 10%. <laughs> Rude. Mage Warlock. Perfect. Yeah, that's solid. Anytime you can pull that off, you're happy. Yeah, that's something you don't want to... You don't... You don't, uh... Get sad about wasting the Divine Shield on. Yeah. Heard you're doing a 24-hour marathon stream for Alterox release. Is it one of those whisper campaigns? Is that... <laughs> Is that what you heard? Shopkeep? What do you follow it up with? What's the idea? You just top deck something? Uh, yeah. I'm fine with it. Uh, worst case scenario, we totem. But it protects our 2-1, so I think it's good. Easily just gonna pull a little Kandaran out of our bum holes here. A little scrapyard. Yeah. <laughs> now we're gonna draw horribly down on this end. The release for a new expansion would not be a good time to do 24-hour stream because people wouldn't be paying attention to me. Everyone's streaming during the, <laughs> during the new release. Yeah, it didn't work out so good, huh? I guess we should hit first. I guess. If Flame Ward's not in... You heard it That's through the insane. grapevine cleaver. Oh man. Ahoy it through the grapevine. What the hell is going <laughs> on here? We could have had one of those. Yeah, we could have. 
So with that secret out, what's what's your play? Probably Scorpid. Why? Because the battle cry doesn't go off, so we could just easily trade in our two one here to kill it if it's mirror entity. Is that how it works, chat? Is it gonna be stealthed or not? The Scorpid? It's not gonna be stealth. Oh, that would be bad. A frozen clone would be kinda bad. It would be stealthed. I wonder. Reveal? Yeah, I don't know, it's weird. I would do Necro either way, though. How would it be? You know, a 2-4 is not a terrible thing to give them, and it makes our board nice and flexible. Okay. So 3-2 goes into the O3 for sure. 2-1 goes face, I guess. And I think you trade the way the rat, probably. So they don't bounce it or something like that. You could trade the Murloc if you're worried about Toxfin, I guess, but who cares? So these are all spell related. Yeah, yeah. Good thing we don't have any. Not going to be useful information going forward, but in this meta, the way it works is that if you play a minion and nothing happens, then it's spell related. Unless they played Ice Barrier, which is. We had already yeah. discovered was not the case. No. Sorry. Hello, Mr. Video and Brother Video. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Sir Crush. Uh, 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 uh. Let me think. Curious to hear your play here. I would, I would do 1-1 one, one trade in. Hit it with the rocket og and scorpion it. I would not do that. I thought about it though. Okay, at least you thought about it. <laughs> it's a reasonable play. You just it's the best tempo play in truth fact. Truth seeker then. But I just wanted truth seeker. Trade the three two and the one one. I like this because um, I forgot that, that had taunt. That makes it quite a bit nicer than I even thought. <laughs> <laughs> we probably could have gone all face then. Yeah, but no, then that then it just dies to the six four. Um, the reason I like this is sort of because of what we were talking about with waiting for a better time to use certain value. If you're gonna do the rocket and scorpion, that's two very good cards that you're throwing into this, just to achieve something that you could achieve with trading two relatively weak minions. Now, if you're a mega aggro deck and that's your only option, then maybe that's the play you do. Uh, yeah, yeah. Play the good curve card. Nice little draw a little early fireball out there, eh? Yeah, I don't mind that at all. Mm -mm. Not at you all. You know, some people see that play and they're like, God, they killed my minion! But I'm like, wow, our minion killed their fireball. That's great. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> we don't need her. I love the sound that thing makes. Yeah, it's a good sound. Hey! That's a good sound, too. Oh, God. Wow. So chunky. Okay. It's a Death Speaker play. Yeah, is I it think also so. Also, Scorpid, or is it a Proud de Defender? Scorpid's pretty nice because you can make the trade with the Phoenix. And you can also pretty much start to set up lethal. Let's do it. Defender's fine too. I like the clear. Generally you want to put stealth in the middle. Um... Sorry. Maybe this is fine to play around Meteor though. Okay. A heal face. They're scared.
to totem prowl defender and run. How are we getting? Order? How are we getting through these things? Oh, well, we could rocket og actually. Trade this rocket og. Death speaker, kill that. Or do we just rocket og proud defender? Because if we put the proud defender up, we could go face with this. Let's go with that one. I don't know. This like uh, the, the plays all seem relatively comparable for to to me. Um, but going face is nice right now, and I'm not scared of the three three. So yeah, putting up a taunt seems fine. And then we can do the run, and even avenge is reasonable. Health attacks fine too. I don't want to play a spell because of this. Oh. Good call. I, yeah, I forgot about it. That's, it's been so long since we thought about it. <laughs> what do we got here? Yeah. Yeah, that's why I wanted health. It's tempting to go for attack there, but... Okay. Ugh. Um... Totem first, always, yeah. Well, not... Uh, yeah, yeah, you can do totem first. I never want this one. <laughs> it's just slogger to get through, and then death speak of the 7-3. There's an argument that death speak is better on the slogger, but I don't really want to put something to one. I'm not sure what's better, actually. Unless they have enough fire, so... Right, that would be the argument for keeping the slogger healthy. Or, like, a hellfire. We will rebel from the grind up. The grind! Drink with me, friend. Okay. Tap. Tap one. Good lord. <laughs> okay. Uh... Well... But they just gave us lethal. We win, yeah. They just gave us lethal for no reason. It hit him with an oops for that one. I think they deserve it. They just tapped. <laughs> they tapped last, too. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate the sub orange crush. Hope you're having a good day. Man, nice, nice gold get there. Amen. Oh, pray. Stop. I will not have this. The emote tech is the most important part of the blobby coaching. It's, yeah, it's important to be responsible with your emotes. Because you don't want to grief somebody for no reason. But it might have been a teachable moment for our opponent. Isn't this the name of the mummy? Brendan Fraser movie. Emotech. <laughs> uh, thoughts on that? Uh, I don't know if you keep Slogger. Kind of better later, right? We have two of them. Yeah, so I'm sure one of them will come back. Stop goddamn time. Is it better to tempo emotes or go for value? <laughs> <laughs> it depends on your mulligan. Uh, just toss this bad boy in here. Honestly, I don't know. My, I'm inclined to save the shard. I'm inclined to just do nothing. That's fine. I'm okay with being a lazy bum. Couple options here. Yeah, you're looking at the Basilisk. Mm -hmm. I was definitely looking at the Basilisk because the most high impact play, and we have really good follow ups. We could even potentially get an active run next turn. Yeah, let's go Basilisk. Pandaren would have been fine. But then you don't really know how you're going to clear away that 2 3 if you play Pandaren. Yeah. 
shaman. Hmm. Oh, well. You know, we don't have silence in this deck, and I'm sad about it. I think this just dies. This goes always, right? Um, I think that it does, and then we probably want to freeze the 1-1 one, one, so it can't kill our poison, and that means that we also runt. runt. Pretty good play here. I like this. Not poison. It's it's tricky because we already have a poison out, and it's also early game. The poison might have less impact, but is divine shield really gonna help us that much on a two two? I don't know. I think I like poison. It's more upside. Divine shield's almost better, maybe. I my dog know I was gonna wash him in the shower. I can't find him anywhere. <laughs> that, that, that animal sense they know. They know when the rain's coming. Little bastard. The Blowgill or World Cry's dog? No, Blow okay, Gil. all right. <laughs> uh, I guess we just start with one of these, yeah. You thinking about Vile Fiend this turn? About Necro. Necro better. It's nice to get the Vile Fiend down, I guess. Well, I was thinking about a. Maybe finding something that could kill this, so it doesn't just gank our. Let's run. uh Pandaren. I would probably trade two one into two one, but maybe we'll find something. Uh, Take the bless. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the goods. Good question. Kings might be good here though. Maybe we just want kings. Either way is very solid. Goods might get you a good weapon. You might whiff yeah, also. Goods, yeah, go ahead, take the goods. Take the goods. Uh, and play the yeah. So that's a yeah, that's really a tough call because goods might just get you blessing of kings again anyway. Like what? No, you're right. Secret not spell. Ooh, is that the overload? Yeah, but it only overloads for one these days. Ah. Yeah, Blessing of Kings would have been pretty nice here. Um, but Blessed Goods will probably be pretty nice later. As far as this play, I was thinking we might Guardian Og Merchant our poison, but we can't do that anymore, so... I'm sure that poison is just going to go in. Mm. We could Canal this turn. We could Necro. Uh, I guess we probably wanted to start with Blessed Goods. Let's do that now. Yeah, that's fine. It. So now do we want a Slogger? Do we want a Necro, probably? I think Necro, yeah. So it trades better with this. But but the Vile Fiend comes out. Maybe not hit. It's gonna... If it weren't for the Vile Fiend, I would say that that makes sense. But they might go face with the taunt. Lay in bed till he comes to cuddle? Oh, that's dastardly. <laughs> <laughs> Burgly burglu. I almost have our Oh, but we could do it with the um, yeah. Let's do that. yeah, yeah, I like it. Send the slogger into the You so could this goes here, right? Always. What does Burgly do again? Then you play a spell at a coin in your hand. Right, who cares? 
You could also try to high roll with four dragon and think that if I do guardian next turn, then I'm getting another buff. Like play four dragon here and ignore the burgly. That might be better. Yeah, but they would just kill the four dragon. Mm, they don't have enough on board to do that. They probably have one in hand though, so they likely would. Okay, so they do have enough if we don't, if we leave alone the burgle. Four plus one. Yeah, but they have to cl clear the divine shield. Uh, okay, so you want to do that? Yeah. And then this hits here. Yeah. And just face. Place with the helpful hardware store. See if we can get lucky and get another divine shield. Oh, lovely. Oh, shit. No! <laughs> Wait, what? Ugh. Hilarious. Wait, so that. <laughs> That's awesome. I can't believe that. Bro, are you done? <laughs> okay, so. Okay. If you want to go max tempo, you Dark Conviction the 1-1, one, one. you play Slogger, you Divine Shield Slogger, send it into the 4-4, four, four, and then the Bolvar trades with the 3-2 because it gets buffed attack and then it's attack buffs again. That's max tempo. So now we have to decide whether we want to max tempo or do something more hmm. conservative, like Canal with Death Speaker. 16 health, I think we should go for it. Okay, go for it. So safe. <laughs> yeah, Conviction the 1-1. One, one. Uh, Slogger? Oh, I forgot about that part. Yeah, we just... Og Merchant on the... Slogger. Into the 4-4. Four, four. Boulevard trades with the 3-2. And then 3-3 three, three face. So we gave him a coin. Unnecessarily. Congratulations, Geek Bry. I'm proud of you. Nice. That's not a good turn. Yeah, probably not good enough. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing draw. Alright, we just do it again. How many times have we done this already? The four and three. Yeah. So then into the six six. Turns out, chat, drafting two Death Speakers and two Canal Sloggers is really good. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Rossum, you got a nice gifted sub from CJ earlier. More bones to gnaw on. Fresh out of the oven. Is it good enough? I... I don't think so. Oh, I guess it is. Alive with one. <laughs> Alive with one until now. Alive with none. Let's see what's in here, though. I have things you never knew you wanted. Yeah! <laughs> we had nothing to buff. <laughs> uh, rude. <laughs> My tempo play worked. Ah, I feel bad. Sorry. And that uh, lemon. Oh. You're welcome, Rossum. My pleasure. <laughs> Got that right, Geek Bry. Chat's hyping me up right now because my BM. <laughs> Pretty good BM. Four and oh, geez. When did that happen? Where are 
Oh, it says it up here. Yeah. What? Another rogue DH. Not against Demon Hunter, right? I don't think I like keeping it. I think you want Lost in the Jungle. Even Rakadog Merchant would be better in the early game. Yeah, and Pandarans. <laughs> you peace. Well. No, oh, well, that's okay. We'll just get the board on turn eight. <laughs> These are due back tomorrow. Okay. Oh my god. Curve, who needs it? There's always one game like this. It's just inexplicably horrendous drawing. How much is this worth to you? That's good. That's really good. Mm, just run in. Sets up for either of these fours. Mm. Yeah, I think a lot of people would be like, I don't know, maybe I'll play it and not attack. But then this happens and you can't get to the... So now we can Scorpid the 3-1. We also could just Necro. That's fine too. The problem with Scorpid is that it doesn't fade well into the taunts. Um, I guess we could give it Divine Shield. That might be what happens. Need something to happen here. A little okay. Start with that. I think you want Necromancer. Are you yeah. just giving up the board if you play Pandaren? And things are about to get out of hand. So do we Necro and Divine Shield, or just Necro? I think we Divine Shield. We gotta throw all of our resources into not letting them run away with the game at this point. Once the... Yeah, under the 5-2. Like, once the opponent gets... My man. Yeah. Gets these, like, little taunts out there. This is why Demonic Assault was so dominant. Once the opponent gets these little taunts out there, they might not seem threatening in and of themselves. But... Things can immediately get out of hand behind them in a way you can't access. This is why Renowned Performers is good, that Demon Hunter card that's not in the meta right now. And it's not like we need to preserve our value like we do in some other games. We've got the value out the waz. Yeah, now this is this is great because we can get through the taunt because we were aggressive and we can knock the Divine Shield off. So now do we start with this? Do we... No, play the play the curve crush. You love your Pandaren so much. Like Pandaren, if you if you hit a good spell, could be a good play this turn. But you don't know. Oh, we should have gotten credit for that divine shield. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is just really nice. Now we have the board. Uh, Inside voice. Son of a. F yeah, it could be worse. You just traded that away. I'm not trading. Got face. Yeah. Where's our sloggers? God. Oh boy. So we could Vine Cleaver here. We could Pendarin. Like the thing about Vine Cleaver is we're so low on health. That would put us down to this three going in next turn. Let's Pandaren instead. Give me your life steal. <laughs> um, I guess blessed goods, right? Because blessing of kings is a little slow. And then true silver. Hmm. Or maybe forging. Well, we don't have to. We won't be able to play it for a couple turns, but it might be. Yeah, it gets you colossus. Take forging. Um, 5-5 five, five and a 3-4 and totem, I guess. Guess we might as well toss down yeah. the bottom. You little <laughs> bastard! <laughs> so, I like the four drink because Sneeds clears next turn and then we throw four drink down and then Colossus comes. 
So that's like a way to stay alive in the long term. Yeah, trading's great. Oh, that's really nice for us. Trading's great. Would you help a weary traveler? Oh my. What is this? 13 damage. Oh. One, two, three, four, five, full clear. It would be impossible for you to mess this up. <laughs> I like to take my time. <laughs> Thank you. You Boy, can't they have talk really slowed to down me. a little bit here, honey. You can't talk to me. Yeah, they have. You can't talk to me. If you're lonely, you can't talk to me. Toss this boy down. Yeah, pretty pretty straightforward turn, I think. This is not what we stood you can death speak with the 88 if you want. Or well let's see. Are we trading? Both? Hey there, Faceless. If we're trading both, then you Death Speaker the 8-8. Eight, eight. If the 8-8 eight, eight goes face, then you Death Speaker the 3-5. Because I'm fine with either play. This is really ultra safe play is to double trade. Let's do that. Okay, so Death Speaker 8-8 eight, eight into the 3-4. Should we play Revenge? Yeah. This seemed like a Vine Cleaver turn. Save coins, but no one cares. But well, I want Colossus next turn. Vine Cleaver is obviously good as well, but... You know, like, so if... If... Your top end is like a... Sated Threshadon, then I agree, save the taunt until later. But we're we're moving swiftly towards the Colossus with purpose. Clear with four damage. Yeah, slam Colossus, go face, hope they don't have a silence, and also 6 damage. <laughs> or 4 damage, yeah. Um, that's fine, we could still put 11 face. Oh, that's right, let's do it. Weakens Colossus, but it doesn't matter really at all. Because either they have the silence or they don't, pretty much. Do ya? That. I'm sure Vine Cleaver also would have led to winning. The Battle Master. That was a horrible beginning game, but they really fell off a cliff there. Yeah. So that was, I think, a pretty educational game. Um, the the turns where you wanted to Pandaren might have worked out, but if they didn't, then you're pretty much out of the game because they've got the taunts up. They're going to keep stacking behind the taunts. And we stabilized with just enough health left to be comfortable because we were so aggressive with our value, which is you know, kind of the opposite of what I had been saying in the other games of like, be greedy, be greedy, try to squeeze value out here or like throw everything at them because our hand is stacked. We just have to last until Sneeds, basically. Yeah. I always love keeping Nobleman, but with how few threes we have, I think it's fine to keep Nobleman. Um, again, going first, Og Merchant. That seems okay. I think we've had... Job done. <laughs> 
I wonder if there is a thing with noblemen that if you already have the golden copy, it doesn't do that copy. No, it would just make another one. Oh. Yeah, I mean, nothing else is final. Good. Just a little bit of hope to look forward to. Mm -hmm. Could be good to, like, delay lethal for Colossus, so. Roby. Nah, I'm, like, Another already seeing how this game is gonna go. Garbos. Oh, we can do this and this. I like that. Reporting for duty. This run has been not bad for us. What do you take here? The health? Health is okay. I'm kind of digging the plants. They're kind of similar, right? Yeah. Like, the, in, in both cases, you're saving two power. If that makes sense. Death Rattle's good if they have Galaka. Yeah, yeah. Guloka. We can... Full clear. Have a totem on board. Was it if we dark conviction it? Yeah. Uh I do like that play, I think. Cause again, we don't want things to get out of hand. So let's dark conviction and totem. Um it's the same. It's the way. same. Hello. We can just get to the end game with whatever copy we get of these. Prison sentencing system, sentence lengths, and recidivism. Situation in the U.S. compared to other countries. Thoughts about it. Also, let CJ speak. Well, you want to go first? Are you talking about because you can't hear me? What? <laughs> Nobleman taunt. Yeah. Let me Give me Canal Slogger. I don't know what the that one word is. Well, I let him speak. Okay, so it's <laughs> recidivism. That I believe is like um People who leave jail but go back to jail. Oh, because they're like institutionalized. No, I, like um, regression rates. May, maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, redoing crimes. Like people who get out of prison and oh. then like get back into the system, and you know. God damn it! <laughs> it's okay. So we just six four. Yeah, I kill the four five. The sad thing is we can't vine cleaver next turn. Um, so maybe we should have just I don't know. Done. I don't know. We gotta we gotta do something. I don't know. Picky. Christ, this guy's gonna run out of stuff. Spell damage to. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Wait, do we save this? I mean, are you gonna bolt the two one? Trigger dirty tricks. I think you probably do these two next turn. Yeah, let's not. We're gonna need some. Libram of Hope, that's for sure. Still got a coin? Um...
It kind of has to be Canal, doesn't it? Because otherwise they're just a few off lethal. See what the totem is? I think you kill the 7-5 even still. And now you use Lightning Bolt. I'm kind of glad it was... Not dirty tricks. But we can play Vine Cleaver next turn. Um. Show these mortals <laughs> oh my god. Are we alive? 6, 10, 13, 15, 16. We're not. God damn it. We need to draw something. Uh, yeah. It's, uh. Well, now we're alive, right? 6, 10, 13, 14. Yeah. So we have to shoot it with the Og Merchant and Totem, unfortunately. Shoot the two one, I mean. Awkward ass game. They just they played like three cards per turn, and they still have so many cards. I don't. It doesn't even think that they didn't generate that much. And they got you, Sarah, right away. <laughs> Well, the faceless, are you happy? I let CJ talk, and he said, "What's recidivism?" Did you get what you wanted out of that request? <laughs> are you proud of yourself? Me? Yeah, I'm proud of you. Okay. Well, that game was just um, luck of the draw. You have to get in those door move. Ain't that the truth? Both of you can speak. Oh, great. <laughs> Twitch TV. I will bring order. OJ Boots. Um. I think Dark Conviction is better in the late game, yeah, so just keep the Pandaren. Hello. Coin and two's all over the place. It's OJ Woods. Yeah, they don't seem to have any, uh, hmm. content. Hmm. They don't seem to be here. Okay, so the prison system in the United States is an absolute nightmare, and it's far worse than any of us even imagines. Unless we've been to prison, and you know, then we'd know. Um, this is a coin. <laughs> this is a definitely a coin, uh, vile fiend. You get the vile fiend out first, for sure, almost every time, because it has more impact earlier. Um, it's a punitive system, so there's uh, like very little rehabilitation offered. Sometimes there are teachers or or psychologists or whatever who who can go and work with the inmates, but that's almost an afterthought. The main purpose of the prison system is yeah, I like that one. is to, like, reinforce the prison industrial complex, or in other words, to keep the colonialist power structure in place. So, you know, we love to talk about how we got rid of slavery in the United States, even though we were later than everyone else in the world. Um, but slavery didn't really end, it just transformed. And the way slavery works now is that black folks and poor folks are specifically targeted by the legal system, thrown in prison, and then used as slave, la slave labor for very little, if any, pay at all to do things like fight fires, even. Put their lives in danger. There's no woman here? A pretty good hand. Um, I... Hmm. You think about Pandar and Avenge. Hmm. Yeah. 
Nobleman's fine, it's just bad on the board, though. Ooh. Yeah, Kings and Steed are both good. Let's go Steed. Mm, kill the 3 1. And the reason that there isn't rehabilitation is to increase rates of recidivism. Um, if prisoners actually got support, education, um, some sort of system that is meant to reintroduce them into the world and keep them from committing crimes again, then crime rates would go down. But the goal isn't to stop crime. The goal is, in fact, to perpetuate crime. Hmm. Just nobleman lightning bolt? I think that seems good. Uh, Let me lightning bolt first. Maybe to try to get a double steed? That's the one that I wanted the least. Still not bad. Yeah, it's not bad. Part of the problem in the United States is that we have for-profit prisons, which is just a monstrous idea. And what it means is that companies and, you know, the rich folks who own those companies make more money the more people we throw in prison. So then you have pol political figures like Joe Biden, our current president, who kind of instigated the war on crime, wrote the disastrous crime bill in, I want to say, the 80s or 90s that still is in effect to this day that leads to a whole lot of people getting tossed in the brink who shouldn't be going to prison. It just preys upon poor urban communities. And the reason is because some people want to make some money. So we're going to shopkeep here. Mm. Do we shard or measures? Uh, does shard really do much? I'm not sure that well, measures is a crapshoot as well. And I don't even know what to kill, whether we kill the 2-3 or the 2-2. Two, two. I think 2-2 two, two, probably. In that case, in that case, let's measures. Because the 2 3 can just value trade with the 2 1. Not even we are going to know. We're not going to look? Okay, that's fine with me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm down. So the prison system is just a scheme to make money, and therefore the sentences are five times longer than in other countries. Oh, yes. And the, and the United States has. By far, by far the highest incarcerated um, population per capita of anywhere in the world. The prisons are nasty. The food is nasty. A whole lot of abuse happens in our prisons. And like I said, um, they're used essentially, they're farmed out. The prisoners are farmed out for slave labor. And it's gotten even worse during COVID because the COVID conditions are in some prisons essentially let's abandon prisoners to whatever fate uh like there are some prisons where prisoners basically like it got locked down and they couldn't even like go to the bathroom um well, we have to shard first Whoa. oh right um can we can we freeze the cat freeze the cat make us totem And then I think we make another secret and freeze the face, maybe? What do you think about that? Just kind of like yeah. maximum stuff on board. Two million people behind bars at all times. That's 1.4 times, 1.6 times the population of Estonia. Yeah, so, you know, we have more people in prison than some countries have. People. You know, early in early early in COVID there were um there was a prison riot. I don't remember in what city. Seattle maybe? I don't remember. And the prisoners um were putting signs up in the windows that were saying essentially like help us, the COVID conditions are terrible. Like we're dying in here. Somebody help us. Um 
There's a pretty good movie. It's not really about this, but um, Brawl in Cell Block 99. It's about a guy who goes into the prison system, like a like a brutal prison, and like it's because he wants to get to someone who's in that prison. Um, it's just like a f extremely violent and brutal movie, starring Vince Vaughn, who's terrifying in it actually. Uh, plus, should probably a dark conviction that, huh? Mm. Anyone want to steed? Mm. Like you could steed and trade the cat. Yeah. Maybe that looks better. I mean, what your dark conviction, noble mounting, and then trading the three three if you do the other line. Steed. Yeah, let's steed. Cause, cause then they have to trade everything else in. in this one. Yeah, and kill the three four. So the six seven will go in, or maybe they'll do it in. Either way, the rest of the minions die at least. Mm. Max sentence here is twenty one years, and that's given only to serial killers and serial rapists. You can get twenty one years in the U.S. by spitting in a teacher's face. I mean, you can you can get years and years in prison in the United States. It's not that exaggerated, is the thing. Like, people have gotten years and years in prison for skipping a a a, a, a subway toll for um like essentially driving while being black. Like like the horrible horrible like marijuana possession. Like minimal amounts of marijuana have put people away for like a decade plus. It's ridiculous. I like it too, and the con and the uh, the overload doesn't even hurt us because we're not looking to Colossus next turn anyway. Imagine spending all that money to imprison someone for skipping a subway fare instead of just making the subway free. Yeah, it's like reading about subway fares and and like the subway costs aren't enough to really support the transit system. They mostly exist to be like a symbolic payment and also to exclude homeless people from using the transportation. Conviction this and then true seeker. Let me think. Well, but then you kill the 3-3, three, three, right? Oh, yeah, right, right. Yeah, I like it. Trade here. Yeah, I like trading one of them. What the hell, man? Public transit costs hurt the most vulnerable and have little to no impact on the wealthy. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's just like fines. Most crimes punishment are fines, which is only a punishment for poor people. Rich people don't give a shit about fines. So basically crime is legal for rich people because they can pay. <laughs> okay. And we got there. This person doesn't have any spells in their deck, so... That bond system, right, so, and another really inhumane thing about U.S. prison system is bail money. Like, you have to pay to get out of prison. Uh, it's... it's absurd. Alright, I think... What is our secret? We have to know what our secret is now. Never surrender, ugh. Alright, what do you what do you do here? Let me think. We can get through this. We cannot. But then this yeah we can. We're one short. We hit in. Mm -hmm. Deal two damage. Oh no, this. you're right. You're right. And then we just leave the six three up. Okay. Yeah, but then the six three and the hero power would get through ours and then we just have nothing. Kind of like Og Merchant and Scorpid into the 6 3. Okay. And then we could either trade or not, either way. Probably not. 
Yeah. Yeah, no, public transportation doesn't get better if you make people pay to ride it. It's like a like subsidized government thing anyway, and, um... You know, there are public transit strikes, and those strikes are never to raise the fees so that we get paid more. Those strikes are always... We know you can pay us more, but are choosing not to. Two drafted brood mothers. Pretty ridiculous, hey, isn't it? That's what... Well, either way, we're killing the two big ones. It doesn't matter how we do it. We just use everything to kill both of the big ones and then play the four dragon. Do we play the four dragon or do we wait? We should probably wait, right? To draw a minion. Yeah. Crazy, but just totem. had the uh divine shield yeah it was looking good for us but their late game is ridiculously good you and nixia are gonna survive oh good there's the spell that they <laughs> All right, four dragon tier power. Uh, <laughs> ridiculous. Two Anixia and two Colossus I. What are we supposed to do about that? So, I, mm, I guess we have to ping the 7-7. Seven, seven. No, See what totem is. It's so weird, because you would love to Divine Shield that, but I think you have to do it this way. They can just kill the 8-6 though, so I think the point's a bit moot. I guess Needs keeps us in it. Can the government really not invest to fix the problems now that ridership fees are gone, or are they for some reason choosing not to? Yeah, like, like um, places with good transportation, it's not because of the fees. The fees are nominal. They don't really add up to much. It's sort of like college. Most colleges make most of their money from a small handful of rich people. It's their endowment. Um, it's not really from your average Joe's tuition. But to kind of wrap up the prison conversation, yeah, United States is cartoonishly evil. Um, the new version of slavery uh, disproportionately targets poor people, racialized people. But I did want to say um, that nowhere in the world is the prison system really just. Um, everywhere in the world, pretty much, it's healthier than the United States prison system, but that doesn't mean it's healthy. I think that that's important. On to the next one. A shame. What we need is a restorative justice system, one that is built around providing for the needs of people who got in trouble with the law so that they don't have to get in trouble with the law again. Because most people who commit crime don't do it because they're like sociopaths. Most people do it because they don't have resources or like a path in life because their communities are underserved. So yeah, restorative justice, like, give people a framework, 
to like have some way to get their foot in the door of having a like a a, a life where they can provide for their loved ones get them psychological help if need be provide these things and then you won't have as much recidivism and then you won't have as many people in prison but the reason that's not happening is because it, it makes money so Harvard has a multi-billion dollar endowment and could charge all students zero dollars to attend and would be fine. You could consider keeping Scorpid. I could really go either way on that. This is a very strong middle game minion that comes out with um, initiative. Mm. I've been keeping Scorpid a little bit more. Do we? I don't see the need. We could always do it next turn if we want to. In a box? Uh oh. Yeah, it's sort of like how rich people give to charity. It's to deflect criticism only. I like it. Shopkeep. Colleges suck. The colleges suck, it's true. Scorpid. Trade Scorp, it protects our 1 1. We don't care about our 1 1. It also gives us a 5 2 with stealth. I wonder if we would rather just Pandar and Runt and double trade. Because Scorpid's going to continue to be good. Yeah. I like me that poison. I do. You know, if you play Runt and there's stuff that can contest it, Divine Shield will often be better, but on an empty board, I do like that poison. Fair enough. Nice draft there. <laughs> hey, what do you like here? Blessing of Kings. Yeah, trade with the 3-4. And we could freeze the one too if we want. Have you picked the warrior here at power this meta? I have not. No. Not once. Is this a Scorpid Avenge? That's kind of where I was looking. The Slogger doesn't make sense. There's not really anything sensible to Dark Conviction. Death Speaker's awkward. You could Death Speaker as well. The, those seem to be the two options, Scorpid or Death Speaker. If you Death Speaker, you could Totem in Avenge. Maybe that's... And then you kill the 1-2 with the 2-1. Maybe that's better. Scorpid is like a little bit easier to use than Death Speaker. Yes. Yeah, some people just like Warrior, I guess. Or maybe they're trying to build like a control build where they want a lot of armor or something. I don't know. <laughs> the world contains multitudes. Perfect. I have things you never knew you wanted. 
Perfect. Well, slog trade. I wonder, totem. Should we see what totem we get? Yeah, I was kind of looking at Dark Conviction. It's not particularly inspiring. See what totem healing. Be a favorite. Scorp at that. <laughs> if, if if so, in that case, maybe. Hmm. Maybe Scorpid's better on the two one. And then face. Making a little push. I got a book for Christmas last year that says I contain multitudes. What the fuck is this? Here's some books that I that I've gotten as gifts. Oh, mom made me read that one. Strength Finder. Discover your Clifton strengths. I don't know what this is. I don't even remember where this came from. Yeah, hands really good. Hmm. Maybe just play hand on the one three. Try to draw something. We can do slogger and get the overload out of the way. I think it makes sense too. And of course I also have How to Stay Christian in College. This was given by my mom a long time ago. I'm gonna have to do like a reading of oh. Oh, that's... Vance Worley. <laughs> I guess that's from when you read it. What is up with people just templating this against us? Yeah, what? That's twice today. Well, it certainly looks like a... Hot Cleaver or Odd Merchant. In here. In face. Do it. Lovely. I think I've read both of those. I don't know how they came to be in your possession. I only the finest creatures. But I'm glad. You read Strengths Finder? Really? Where the heck did that come from? It doesn't really matter which Colossus or... Goliath. Either way, you're too off lethal. I probably would have colossed to like keep the initiative in hand, but it's, it's I don't even bother with that. Lethal. Oh, did we have a one one that could attack? Oh, it's true. We did have lethal. Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> Don't even bother with lethal. <laughs> <laughs> Don't even bother with lethal. Who needs it? <laughs> Chumps. Oh, they're gonna brawl now. Omega oh, lol. <laughs> so you gotta show them the dark conviction if they don't concede.
Hey, don't set the next one. I gotta. I want my best. Something. I'm hungry too. Um. Well. Okay. Well, we're. I mean, we're probably almost done. Do you want to just push through? Yeah. Yeah. Let's do that. <laughs> Both got up. <laughs> We're back. <laughs> We're back. We're back, chat. What do you want to get for food? Or do, or blah. I mean, I had leftovers I was going to warm up, but if you want to order something or whatever, then I can... Well, depending on the status of everyone else, this could be the Taco Bell lunch. That's true. I think Jacob uh, goes to work at around three, but maybe would want some talk about before then. I'm not sure. You want me to text? Uh, sure. People. Do we keep Grim? So Grim is enough worth worse than Scorpid that maybe not. Let's see. Going second. We're probably coining Vilefiend, so no, I, I think no Grim. You could keep Grim if you're thinking you might coin fours, but we're looking like we're gonna coin twos. Tappa tappa, tappa tappa, yeah. Be here, you know. Yeah. Tappa tappa, tappa tappa, do it again. Thank you. Oh boy. Four, four hits. Okay, so... Yeah, that's fine. Send the two rushes in. We need everything we can get to get through these boofs. Some options here, huh? You sure do. Every well, not better. Spoiled for fours. Spoiled for spores. Mm -hmm. uh. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> hey, what do you well, like? I like slogger or scorpid. I don't like Slogger. Like, what does it do for us? It gets through a taunt, but anything gets through these. Mm. I don't know if I like Scorpid either. I, I would I would verge towards Necro or maybe the 4 or 5, but probably Necro. It just, like, goes wide, puts a bunch of bodies on the board. Um, sets up to have a more high-impact Slogger or Scorpid next turn. Mm-hmm. Like, the beauty of Scorpid is that you can do two damage and kill something with a lot of attack. These only have one attack. So the trades are better into these. Seems like we got some taco takers. Hmm, interesting. 
there's just a lot of plays that are perfectly comparable here. Um, the one two probably goes into the one one in every case. Scorpid is weird because like one one into four one is so nice. I think we take the one one into the four one, and then we could think about whether to Scorpid the two one, or whether to put a taunt out, or even just the four five and ignore it. You could canal, but I would rather be able to speed next turn. So what- okay, so here's the question. If we're looking to next turn steed, what is the thing that helps us best do that? This. Probably? Mm. You could argue Scorpid because it's stealthed, but they might have AoE, right? These two classes especially. Oh, so yeah, let's- let's defend it proudly and go face. Proud defender doing a lot of pr uh, proud defending. Mm-hmm. He's what you might call a proud boy. Oh. And like all proud boys, is under the boot of the pigs. <laughs> well. It's still a good steed, so the question is do we like any other plays better? Probably not. You just kill the 6-4. And the nice thing about this trade is that you get some good value out of Steed, so even if they silence, at least you got that trade, you know? They don't have silence, though. They don't have silence. It's a big game for Dawson here. Yeah, <laughs> true. <laughs> yeah, it's the decisive moment. Ah. What? They're sitting over there like, they don't have silence. <laughs> uh... 2-0 oh so far? Nice. Yeah, yeah, the, the hero, I knew the hero power would be good for you. Do you want to try to find a spell? Sure. I have seen you have to tell me no. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you could go for the cheeky adapt if you if you want. These are just so trash that I think you might. Hope for poison. Adapt the dinosaur. Yes. Okay. Um. And now we hit, and it's still a threat. And then we slogger, right? Shoot. Yeah, pretty good. Now that is what we like to call an answer. Now that's what I call. We're not done racing. yet, Dawson. Oh shit! Draconic lackey into Isera. Oh shit! You're really joking at a time like this. <laughs> Where's the nearest Taco Bell? Brother mine. Actually, don't know. There's one in Center City. That's not the one you want to go to. I think there's one relatively new here. I'm going to like, use my telephone to find out. You don't have to do it right now. Would you like to come with me? Wacky into crap. Oh my. <laughs> what? That's stupid, though. What? You just kill the. Well, oh no, I thought it was the other one. I thought it was Rodent's Nest. <laughs> they miss out on. One. But yeah, they, they do miss it on one still. Uh. Okay, so, uh, okay, uh... Yeah, I think you shoot it with the Scorpid. And then... Maybe Basilisk? Wait, let, let me let me calculate. So, shoot it with the Scorpid, you're trading the 1-3. That leaves 5, 1-2. So Basilisk is not good, so you would, you would totem, I think. Deal. That's good. 
so maybe trade with the 1 3 and the 2 2 and send the 6 face. You could argue about the 2 2 or not. The 1 3 definitely hits something. Yeah, it's a lot of damage. I like going face with it. Healing totem clutch there. Like a bell is delicious. Cleans out your system, you know. Clean energy. Desert power. Trade demons because of bartender. Right, bartender. I haven't seen a bartender in ages. Oh, that's a nice little dark conviction. But you know I haven't been going out because of COVID. That is a very nice Dark Conviction, because that would have caused us some problems. We start with... Well, let's see. 4, 7, 9. We probably still don't want to play Basilisk, so we can start with Importer. I have things you never knew you wanted. Yeah. That Adapt was good for us, though. It was. So we play this? Yeah, because we're going to do 4 and 2. I could take any of these, honestly. Reckoning might be most proactive? Yeah, just in case they play another big bully. The weapon's okay, too. Helps some trades. Um, but for now, yeah, Conviction, the Taunt. And we want the 4-5. Unfortunately, we have to trade the Scorpid, but... Elements that's what it's there for. Nice oh, and let's get rid of that Og. Very nice. You like Popeye. What? Are we going to all my olive oil? No. Wait, you can't hear me? Oh, get the, get the noise gate off the mic. Okay, that's... <laughs> Just. How about. He wasn't a trained public speaker, chat. He was trained to throw good with his arm, okay? Oh, okay. It's pretty good. Yeah, and lost as well. And then you just sit because you can't get through that. I refuse to believe this is a non-infinite deck. We face that one absurd value priest, and our deck is not absurd value. It's good card quality, but it's not absurd value. So it makes sense that they beat us. Um, there's the other loss where we drew ridiculously badly. And now this is looking to be a pretty close one. Yeah, that's unfortunate, huh? Do they send the five face? It's almost better if they don't. They're gonna kill the totem with it? They might kill the totem with the... 2-1? We'll see. We're out of stuff again. Yeah, we're out of stuff. And look at these people. We have good draws, though. That's why. Where did you get this? Just need Vine Cleaver action. Any of our top four, really. Nice. Yeah, that's good. Terrible. Okay, well. Mm. Um... Well, let's kill the 2 1. Those were Basilis comes down for sure. <coughs> Why didn't I draw a better card? Because I, I, don't, I don't have my hand on the mouse. What do you think? Kill the 3 4 and send one face, maybe? Or to kill the 3 5 because we're worried about it spawning 1 1s? Probably.
We're gonna draw Scrapyard and not be able to play it. <laughs> I think we're gonna draw Death Speaker. Yeah, like I'm teaching him how to golf. All right, and follow through. Okay, very good. You teaching me how to golf. Like, it's a simile. A simile. <laughs> we just need vine cleaver. Yeah, you want them plants. Sticky. Anything that keeps stuff on the board we like. And yeah, we kill the 4 4. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, Dawson. <laughs> it's tragic, isn't it? It really did seem like. Uh, promising deck. Wait a second, the... Who's gonna be rich? Who was it? Uh... It was, um, Sneaky. Right? Mm -hmm. Like, 39k on. Uh -oh. One, two, three. Okay, I, I know how to do this. Let's see if you can figure it out. Taunt. Sure. <laughs> it's fine, it's fine. It's not terrible. Okay, we gotta get rid of the Divine Shield. Mm hmm What did it- I guess it's fine, it's the same either way. Okay. And then, boom, 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 boom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's literally the same. And we're in business. Problem is, they still have tap. We need Vine Cleaver. My favorite thing about golf is how it uses up land that could be a wonderful public thing for everyone, such that only a handful of people can enjoy it. Pave the parking lot and put up paradise, as Joni Mitchell said. Uh, there was a golf course at my high school. <laughs> I went to boarding school. It was nine holes. It's an unfortunate removal, but... Their hand's looking a bit... light. We have time to draw something. Like Vine Cleaver. Here we go! Here we go. Okay. So we've been waiting for. I think you just ship it all face. Start with a minion. Get wrecked. You must obey. You must obey. Bobby went to Hogwarts and played Quidditch. Shut up! Top deck. Right off the top. Hey, we're good. All we need to draw is... <laughs> okay, we're not so good. Well, 15... Um... Hmm. Friendly character immune this turn. Six twelve. So we can't attack. Uh or they kill us. Uh Death Speaker and send one of the one ones and then just sit. We need a canal slugger now. Or Man, we went through all of our Pandarans this game. They suck. Yeah, Slogger or Colossus, that's what we're reduced to. That's such a Slytherin thing to say. 
I'm a something of a slicker, licker, lick, liquor, higgle piff uh, hybrid because on my on my days when the Aries moon is in rising, I display Severus Snape qualities, but I'm actually quite impulsive, also like a Jigglypuff. That's my impression of you, Harry Potter fans. Oh, did we lose? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not doing anything. Oh, no, no. No, he threatened me. All right, well, threaten so... him back and then kill yourself. No. Threaten him back and then kill yourself. That's the right play. <laughs> it's not the right play. It's the right play. I'll threaten him Look, back as soon I'm as I start I'm a 10-time leaderboard player. <laughs> I'll start, I'll rope. I'll rope and then I'll kill myself. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> I get sour playing this game because of fucking back to back top decks. Like yeah, this. it's annoying. It's annoying. But we also got back to back top decks to be. No. <laughs> yeah, we got we got Sneed and then Violet Cleaver. That's not a thank you. Now we drew really terribly up until that point, but. Listen, Taco Bell is on the horizon. You have nothing to be upset about. <laughs> Sorry we couldn't do it for you, Dawson. I would describe CJ as Big Mad. <laughs> Ooh, do you think they sell Big Macs at Taco Bell? I'm okay now. Uh, no. Big Raps? Actually. Yeah, man, I haven't been infinite in like eight runs. So we have we were five and oh. True. Gold you got there. Thanks. That's actually pretty nice for six wins. Well, I learned that sometimes you can learn as much as you can try, but it doesn't matter in this meta. Let's actually review what we learned, though. Um,. We had that one pick in the draft, Vile Fiend over Walking Fountain. Walking Fountain, and I think it generally worked out well for us. It was a really integral early game piece a lot of the time. Yeah, there was one... We top-decked it late one that one time. Top yeah. deck where we rather have Walking Fountain. Which feels like a fair trade-off. Um, but I think that... <laughs> yes, you know, I did. I, let me pay this bet out. Rip to awesome. I found that to be a pretty useful run. I think the the big takeaways are well in the draft we were really thinking about our archetype and it generally worked out well for us to have this sort of aggressive deck that then has a decent amount of refill to keep it going and like to total when we need to and stuff. Um that last game was a bummer because if we had just a little bit more value, we could have gotten there. Yeah, I think what I was explaining to you at the beginning um, and that presented itself a little bit was in the mid-game that I, I wasn't always sure which four to play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Given a bunch of choices that seem equal or even comparable, mm -hmm. um, and and I think that's the big lesson to take away from the gameplay part of the session was like you're considering what you're considering foremost what helps you on the board in this situation. Given some relatively equal options, then you think, okay, what sets up for next turn? If that's all the same, you think, all right, how is the rest of this game going to go? Mm. Earlier today, I had some interesting choices where I was choosing between clearing with a fell barrage or clearing with an immolation aura, and they would have done it equally. And I, and I chose differently the two times that happened because I was looking at the opponent's classes and thinking, okay, are they going to go wide later? If they are, I'm going to hold immolation aura. Mm -hmm. Do I think they're just going to play bigger minions? Then I'll hold fell barrage. And so it's about like 
considering what has an impact now, but also what may potentially swing something later in the game. That one, that one turn also where you wanted to Scorp it and Rocket Og Merchant to clear. But we ended up just playing the 5 mana 4, 6 instead. Oh yeah. Like when you can relatively equivalently play a vanilla minion and it's like almost as good, then you probably want to do that because usually vanilla minions are kind of bad. Yeah, what you might draw to, to unlock some extra value as well. Yeah, what's left in your deck if you're getting later on. Um, so it's like kind of giving yourself gifts in the future. What are the cards that are <laughs> going to keep my hand flexible so that I can react to all sorts of things? And with Pandaren, I think these Discover cards, this is a lesson that you could take into pretty much any meta. These Discover cards, the later that you can push when you play them, these understated Discovers, usually the better, because they're not going to have an impact on the board, which is stronger in the early game to have strong control of the board. And the longer you hold them, the easier it'll get to play, because if you play a 2-mana card with 10 mana, that's like, oh, we got so much mana left to do whatever with. If you play it with 4 mana, then you're kind of locked into something. And you also might know more later what you're going to need in order to win. Yeah. 